Hello and welcome to yet another Outward EXP Reons. Today we will be talking about how to make a complete tutorial about the login registration page and how to either retrieve data if the user already exists in the database or to set data if the user does not exist in the database. That means logging in or registrating. So let's go. Now first thing first what we need is obviously a database. So in this case, I have a test database and my table is accounts. In this, I have all the columns for what I need from a player. The basic one is SQL ID, which is a primary key, player name, which is a unique key, password, cache, level, age, health, and position XYZ. Next thing what we need is the login.html and registration.html which you can either make it by yourself or you can fetch it a uh, free source from somewhere. It's very easy. If you do not know how to make a login.html page, I've already done a tutorial on that. So I'll link the description on the screen somewhere here. There's somewhere. If you're in the mobile version, then you won't be able to see. So I recommend using the desktop version. So basically what happens, we will start from our script. So in our main class, what happens is on player connected, it's going to make a class object of class player data. The object name name is player and it is going to set that data over here into the player entity. And how do we set it using set data? And this is the key. The key is data identifier, which is here. It is a read only string and a static one. So that means if we create an object, another instance of this variable will not be created. It is only created once. So player info is our key. So an object gets created whenever a player connects and gets stored. Now, what other things should happen? Over here, we have another class inside the folder player. The class name is core.cs and it is a server event of player connected again. In this, what we're doing is we're retrieving the data that we created previously with the help of this function get data from client, which is somewhere over here, get data from client. Here we go. So if there is no player, it's just going to send null. If the player has that data already set, this is going to be true and it is going to return that data. Otherwise, if the player does not have a data set, we are going to create an object called temp of the data type data. We're going to set the data and then we're going to retrieve the data and return it. So over here, we are retrieving that very object that we created and we're saving it in temp. We're going to freeze the player using a client event. If you do not know how to make a client event, how to trigger it, how to make a client site script, then I'll leave a description link in the description or on the screen so that you can pause this video, check that video out and then come back again. We are going to set the transparency to zero and over here I have made a function account exists or not. I have made a video on this one as well to execute an SQL query to check if an account exists or not. And what basically happens in account exists is that it is a, a synchronous function. That means it does not block the main thread. What it does is it just waits the code right over there and then executes any other code that is supposed to run. What happens in account exists is it fetches or it, first of all, we're going to format a query where select count all, all columns, as an alias account number from accounts where player name is this is a placeholder so that your string does not get injected with an sql injection we will take a flag boolean account exists and we will assume that the account does not exist and make it false we will create a mysql command object and pass the first parameter query the second parameter being the connection which we did in our SQL connection video over here you can see it is a static variable con and then oops this one and then we are going to 
replace the parameter player name placeholder with the name of the player and then we are going to execute it using an asynchronous function and over here we check if we actually did retrieve any rows or not if we did re retrieve a row we're going to convert the reader account number to an int if it is one then we're going to return true otherwise false so over here if we have an account what we're going to do is we'll just remove this don't need a console output right now we will trigger a client event which is show login CEF show login CEF and if it does not exist we will trigger a client event called show registration page I could have changed to CEF but well inconsistency does not matter but it works in our client side we have our show login CEF in event name which triggers the function show login page show login page triggers the function show CEF and inside show CEF we're going to show the login CEF which we created in our constructor for login if you do not know about this as well I've made a video about this also I'll link it in the video or in the description box we created this login CEF we will activate show it we will show the cursor and we will disable the chat so this is what happens if the client event show login CEF gets triggered so once the CEF gets invoked as in it is displayed this web page will be displayed I'll show it to you how the web page HTML page actually looks like this page will be shown so once the player hits something in the login button if it is empty it's gonna say attention password cannot be empty but if it is not and if we hit that login button what happens is login dot click function over here we will use over here I'm checking if the password text is empty or not we will trigger a client side event using MP dot trigger in the HTML page we will trigger login info to client and we will pass the parameter password dot value so we will go back to our client side script and we will find login info to client over here you can see login info to client event name invokes the function send info to server and inside send info to server we will call a remote event which is in our server side script the name of the event is login info from client and we are going to pass the parameter the password that we got from our login.html so we will go back to our server side script and find login info from client inside our login folder login.cs we have an remote event named login info from client and this is the function callback that it will execute over here we are going to check well we have already checked that we have an account that the account exists or not in the database over here we are going to load all the values from the database to our object that we created inside player data so let's begin